Okay. So I just want to welcome everyone. Um, my name is Lynn Wilson. I'm with the IDRC Corn Project. But this webinar today is being sponsored by IAIA Continuing Education. And they have a lot of great webinars um, and different classes going on throughout the semester. And at the very end of the presentation, uh, there's a slide uh, where we can show you some of the upcoming classes that they're going to have. Um, I know Roxanne, one of the one of the next classes they're going to do is one that you're teaching, the Essentials of Product Photography, which is an awesome class. But um, I encourage everyone to visit the IAIA Continuing Education website to see what classes are coming up. And if you need have any questions, you can reach out to Jonathan Breaker, who is their Continuing Education Manager. And go ahead to the next slide. And uh, again, my name is Lynn Wilson. I'm with the IDRS ACORN project. So we are partnering with IAIA Continuing Education to deliver uh, some of the webinars and classes this semester. Um, our organization provides small business training and technical assistance for native entrepreneurs. So if you are a native entrepreneur and you have a small business or you're looking to start a small business, and you need any kind of assistance, perhaps with a business plan, or you just have a business question in general that, uh, that you need answered, please reach out to us. Our services are free of charge, and our website is nativebiz.org. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Roxanne to get us started on some stress relief. Yay, one of my favorite topics. I'll come back to that slide at the end. Um, just a quick introduction about who I am. Um, some of you may have been in some of my classes in the past, but I am a member of the Confederated Tribes of the Colville Reservation here in Washington State. I have a Bachelor of Science in Sports Management, and I specialized in the scuba diving industry and minored in business. I am a photographer by trade. And I have, I'm also, I have an associate of science in culinary arts, and I am a 200 hour trained yoga instructor with the Yoga Alliance. And I specialize in yoga for trauma and PTSD and yoga for addiction and recovery. And I'm also a certified stand up paddleboard yoga instructor. So um, meditation and mindfulness and just creating practices in our lives to help us to to, to manage everyday stresses that we don't even realize are having an effect on us. And one of the main topics I'm gonna to discuss with you today is meditation. But before I get into meditation, um, I just wanted to share this, this article about um, stress in, in, during the pandemic. This was a, a study that just came out, I think it was six months ago. No, yeah, it was about six months ago. And, and I'm sure the numbers are different if they, if they have done an updated poll. Um, but across the country, there have been spikes in depression, PTSD, domestic violence, and substance abuse problems just from the start of the pandemic. And it shows the psychological toll that it is taking on Americans. Um, according to the poll, 45% of adults say the pandemic has affected their mental health. 19% say it has had a major impact. And another survey found that 69% of employees said the coronavirus is the most stressful time of their career. 88% said they had experienced moderate to extreme stress over the past four to six weeks. The research makes one thing clear. The pandemic has greatly impacted daily life as we know it, and it's taking a toll on all of us. Now, I, I, I would almost say um, all of us are experiencing low levels of stress or anxiety every single day, whether we recognize it as such or we just think that we're okay. We're all being affected in different ways and our body interprets it as stress or an attack, regardless of if we verbally recognize it as a stress or attack on our body. So those underlying stresses are accumulating in all of us. And unless we start to adopt some sort of practice in our lives for self-care or just to get, get ourselves centered. And I say centered, I'm, I'm speaking like a yoga instructor now, but getting ourselves like to, to look inward a little bit more. I think these numbers would be a lot higher because when we're answering polls, we tend to and not answer 100% honestly. 
but I, I, I would, I would venture to say that those numbers are drastically different. But why do we meditate? Um, some of the main reasons why we would want to meditate is to manage to to reduce stress and help us to manage those thoughts that float through our brains and, and they cloud our ability to make. Um, really good decisions in our lives. Um, right now, a lot of us are living in what is called a stress response. And we have, what happens when we're in the stress response is we stop using our big brain where we can make really good decisions. And we start shifting into our primal brain where we're in constant survival mode. I mean, everyone's talking about the weight that they're putting on during the pandemic. And, you know, they're mostly associating it with a more sedentary lifestyle and the possibility of maybe a diet change where they've started to consume more foods that aren't serving their bodies. But in reality, what's happening is with the stress, our body dumps a hormone called cortisol, which then increases our fat stores on our bodies because our bodies are in that survival mode. So our bodies are holding on to all of our energy stores so that we can survive. Um, and meditation, what that does is it helps us to, you know, get those thoughts and get those feelings more manageable. It doesn't make them necessarily go away. It could, but, it, you know, it takes a, a steady long-term practice to really get those like elimination effects, but it definitely makes our day-to-day -day existence a lot more manageable. Um, so it promotes emotional health and, if you're a person who by the end of the day, you tend to have a shorter fuse, like you get upset a lot, a lot faster then maybe at the beginning of the day, or maybe it's the opposite for you, whatever it is, it, it allows us to have more um, self-awareness, which then gives us the ability to say, okay, I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. I'm starting to feel a little bit anxious or a lot anxious. And then we can self-regulate. So we can then say, okay, I need to take five minutes and just go, go do some breathing or maybe get myself some water or maybe I need to eat something. Um, or maybe it's just that we need to move our bodies. Um, the other things, other areas that meditation helps is it also lengthens our attention span and it improves memory. And the way that it does that is there's a lot, there's some, some uh, chemistry that happens in the brain, but to put it really simply, what it does is it organizes all those chaotic thoughts that are just spinning around in our minds and we're able to compartmentalize them. And then the things that we need to recall are easier to recall. Um, it generates kindness, which right now I think we could all use a little more kindness in the world. And it also, my favorite is that it, um, aside from the stress help, is it improves sleep. Um, so before we get into that, I want to encourage everybody, just one lifestyle tip that I give to all my clients is to create a morning routine. And you probably, if you listen to any like self-help or any of the, the gurus that have podcasts or have put books out there, one of the things that they always talk about is that morning routine. And I can attest personally to the power that having that routine has on our lives. For one, one of the biggest reasons is that it allows us to start our day basically on the right foot. <laughs> like we're, we're getting out of bed on the right side and we're also starting on the right foot, not necessarily right or left, but the correct side of bed and the correct foot. So we have an optimal day. And what a morning routine can look like is something as simple as these are the things I do every morning. And what this does is it eliminates that process in our brains like, hmm, should I brush my teeth today? We all pretty much have that dental hygiene uh, ritual where no matter what, before we leave the house or before we start our day, we brush our teeth. And so that that's kind of the things we want to just build on those morning routines. Like I wake up, I go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, I take a shower, or maybe you work out, or maybe you decide to journal, or maybe you're going to take time to meditate, but implementing things that are going to allow you to have an optimized day. And what it does is it keeps those decision-making processes available for the important decisions. Not that the things that we put into our morning routine and we're going to start ritualizing for ourselves every morning, they're not, they're not that they aren't important. It just is more that they 
oh, what is the word I'm looking for? It just, it just we have a limited number of decision making abilities. So if we're constantly deciding, okay, what am I going to eat? How, what am I going to wear? Am I going to brush my teeth or not? Am I going to drink water today? Am I going to exercise today? You know, um, should I wear a coat or should I wear a, a vest? Should, you know, we're making all of these decisions constantly and we run out of our ability to make good decisions by the end of the day when we're constantly being forced to do this. So by setting up, creating that morning routine, we're taking that first hour of our day and structuring it for success. And just as an example, um, I work from home and it is so easy for me. And a lot of us are doing this right now. We're, we're um, sheltering in place and we're not able to, our normal routines have been disrupted. So it's important to reestablish those if you're working from home. And for me, I work from home and it's really easy for me sometimes just to not feel up to the challenge of just being an adult. And so it's really easy to escape by turning on the TV or scrolling social media. And so what I've done is I've set up the space in my morning routine in a way that I don't grab my phone first thing. I don't turn on the TV. I don't do anything except I sit down. I make myself a cup of coffee. I sit down, I journal for the day. And part of that journaling is what are the main things I need to accomplish today? And that helps to create this openness in my ability to think. Because I, I'm, I'm, I guarantee all of you have experienced this when you stand in the middle of the room and you have all these things that you have to do and you, but you don't know where to start. And the thing that that journaling and that daily checklist has done for me is that when I get that way, where I literally walk from room to room, and there's been times where I've like been like, you know how the dog or the cat walk circles and then they lay down, like I'll just like spin in, in the middle of my apartment trying to figure out what I should do. But with that checklist, I'm able to just go to that checklist and pick something that I can just, just attack that, just do that right now. And it has really, really helped with um, creating more, more mental, less mental chatter and more mental calm and peace. I saw somebody raise their hand. Um, um, we'll, what we'll do is go ahead and ask questions in the chat. Um, the question, I think there's a Q&A button and I will, um, I'll get to those questions right at the end. And I will have time for some questions. I will do the questions before we do the meditation. So when we meditate, what we're doing is we're working on regulating and managing and creating an awareness of the five different brave, brave, brave brain wave states that we get into. Gamma state, hopefully y'all are in the gamma state right now. Um, they give a, a like a Hertz level, um, how the vibration, the, the wavelength of this, the state of the brain. But it's, it's when we're, we're active, we're actively learning. Our brain is actively consuming information. One of the coolest ways to consume and, and retain information is to learn while moving. So if you find that you're, um, you're, you're not retain, like if you're reading and you're not retaining, maybe pause and stand up and do some breathing exercises or just like swing your arms around or reach to the sky and touch the toes and then go back to that task. And you're going to find that you're better able to process that information. And then you, it will go, it will assimilate into your um, long-term memory. So you'll be able to hold on to it. Now, gamma state overstimulated is anxiety. So we just, you know, understanding those two, that, that there's a fine balance there. And gamma state is when we're in that active learning mode. Um, beta is, this is where we function for most of our day. Like we just, we're kind of an autopilot. It's associated with alert mind state and it's part of that prefrontal cortex, our big brain. Um, we're working and we're thinking, we're analyzing, we're planning, we're assessing and categorizing. So this would be um, this this would be actively trying to write the report of the material you just consumed. So we're we're processing information. Um, the alpha state; these brain waves start to slow down out of um, slow down out of the thinking mind. We feel more calm. 
peaceful and we feel more grounded. When we're in the alpha state, we find we often find ourselves in, a, um, in, in that state after doing a yoga class or going for a nice walk in the woods or having a nice encounter with somebody maybe we haven't seen in a long time. Anything that helps us feel that sense of ah, that kind of that calmness. Like we, um, there, there's some people that we interact with and we go into that that gamma, that super hyperactive, anxious state. And there's other people or groups that we associate, that we hang around with. And we just feel this sense of calm and re relax. Um, this is kind of a, um, this is like the, the daydreaming state of the mind where we're, we're just, we're aware of what's going on, but we're kind of just, um, if, if you were to describe the type of person who's constantly in this state, you would probably um, call them like an airhead or flighty. But I mean, that's not necessarily, I mean, just, just to give the example, they don't seem to be like super aware, but you know, they're, they're kind of in that imaginative, relaxed, just super like chill state. That's a better way to put it. They're just super chill. They always just seem like, hmm, yep, that's, that's life happening. Um, so here, the hemispheres of the brain are more balanced or um, what they, they call neuro integration. So everything is just working symbiotically. We're aware, we're able to have higher level thoughts, we're able to be creative and problem solve. And it's just a really fantastic state to be, especially for artists and creators. The state, that the, the theta state, so this is where we're able to begin meditation. This is the point where the verbal thinking mind transitions to more of a visual. So we might see things happening in our mind that we can't verbalize. Like sometimes when we have dreams at night and we wake up and it, like we still have that vivid memory of that dream, but we like to try to verbalize it to anybody, it just, it just never happens. We just can't, like it never really translates into verbal communication. So, this, um, this is what happens in meditation. We're able to get into those um, deeper parts of the brain. And we begin to move from the planning mind to more of a state of awareness. Um, you might start to feel drowsy. Oftentimes when people begin meditation practices, they fall asleep. And, and that's okay in the beginning, but the idea of meditation is to stay in that, that state of awareness and without falling asleep. Um, you will start to have a stronger intuition. Um, you have more capacity for wholeness and complicated problem solving. So this is, again, this is where meditation is so beneficial for us because like if we're trying to make a decision and we have a meditation practice and we're able to get into that theta brainwave state, we can make all of a sudden, wow, that decision that was so complicated for the last month, I meditated on it. And now I have the answer. And that's, that's, what, that's how meditation can be really powerful in our lives. And I just I can't speak enough of it. Um, I wish I had a better practice personally, um, because when I do meditate, I, um, I do meditation, many meditation challenges. And when I do them like for 30 days in a row, like, it's amazing The if you see me not meditating and then the meditation version, you feel the calm, you feel that less chaotic person coming through. Um, it is associated with visualization also. Um, the meditation that we're going to do today is a guided meditation, um, but I'll, we'll get to that in, in the towards the end. So Delta state, this is what everyone thinks where we have to go in order to meditate. Um, and this is something that monks, Tibetan monks that have been meditating for decades, um, they can reach this in an alert, wakened state, but most of us reach this final state during sleep, um, like a dreamless sleep where we empty our minds is what they, how they describe it. But in, but what really is happening is, is without sounding too woo woo we we're kind of having an, an outside of our physical selves experience and we're connecting with everything around us. Um, like when we have a night's sleep where we sleep really well, but we don't have any dreams that we wake up to remembering. 
that is what the Delta state is like. Um, it, it's great if you can get there, but it's, it's one of those, um, there's very few people that I've met who, who are not Tibetan monks who have experienced this bliss state. If you were in a yoga class is what, what it's described as. Um, so there's many different types of meditation, as I mentioned, and um, there's what's called a um, transcendental meditation or mantra meditation. Um, it's also referred to as TM. And this is where you are assigned a word and you would have a breathing practice. Um, an example of what that would look like is you would just sit, find your calm, quiet space, deep breaths. And then um, one, um, one of the words that you could potentially use is called satya. And you would breathe in, sa. And as you breathe out, tya. And then you just find a rhythm with that word and the breath. And what it does is it allows you to create this focused state where you're, you're focused on the breath and the word. And you're not saying it out loud, you're saying it in your mind. When you first begin this form of meditation, you do verbalize it, but eventually you would just simply repeat it in your mind and connect that with the breath. Um, focus meditation, this often you'll see people, they'll have a candle and they'll stare at the candle and focus their attention on that object. Um, I'm, the word is escaping me at the moment. You could also have, um, there's pictures that a lot of people meditate on that have different elements in the image. And it just allows your brain to have and your eyes to have something to focus that energy on. Um, you, this could also fall into the, the TM category because you're focusing on your mantra. Um, but it's more oh, eyes open seeing the object or word or person or in um, visually like visually seeing something that's captivating your attention there's um youtube videos where um it's the geometric dream geometrical shapes are coming at you and it's kind of like this this fluid thing that you're seeing and you're just focusing on it and it's bringing you deeper into that meditative state um mindfulness meditation this is just creating awareness and allowing us to begin to connect to our environment in the moment. Um, mindfulness meditation, mindfulness walks, that is like was all the rage last year. Um, and the, actually it's been all the rage for a while. Like they, um, like just being able to stop thinking about the future, stop thinking about the past and just notice how do my feet feel right now in my shoes? How do my feet feel touching the floor? If I'm sitting in a chair, how does my backside feel connecting to the seat? Um, is my back long and straight or am I rounding down? So mindfulness meditation can be really powerful in the sense, and, and this would be very much like taking one of my yoga classes because we do a lot of mindfulness practice in the yoga class. Get in, you know, move into the shape, and then, then we take a moment, like, how does this feel in my body? Where am I feeling this in my body? You know, what is my mind doing when I'm in this pose? What's happening to my breath while I'm in this pose? And so mindfulness meditation is just training us to have that awareness. Um, the coolest thing that ever happened, and this, my, my son has like lost his mindfulness ability. He's nine years old now, but about four years ago, he was so aware of his body that he would be sitting and slouching and he would say, mom, I can tell that I'm getting stressed out right now because I'm not sitting right. And then he would sit up and take deep breaths and say, okay, now I feel better. Um, and so, but he doesn't, he doesn't do that anymore. I'm sad, but so that's what mindfulness is, is just creating that um, either internal awareness, it can be physical things, it can be mind chatter, it can also be environmental, like what's happening around us and that spatial awareness. Um, that foresting idea where we walk through the woods and what that all that is, is just a mindfulness walking meditation. And we're just saying, there's a tree there's a rock <laughs> and you know just being aware and connecting with our environment which then leads us to an actual walking meditation 
Um, and uh, you know, this I'm just trying to break the the stigma that you have to sit in silence, completely clear your thoughts, and breathe, and sit with your legs crossed in this totally uncomfortable position to meditate. That is completely like meditation is all about compartmentalizing the thoughts in our brain, controlling the thoughts to a certain extent. Um, instead of just letting them control us. And that's where, you know, some people can't sit still right now in their lives. So a walking meditation is a much better prescription for them where they go for a walk, whether it's walking inside you, whatever space you're living in and just creating awareness. You could um, A, do a foresting type of walking meditation where you go out into nature and you're like just being one with the mother earth. Or you can do a walking meditation where you write out a positive affirmation or maybe a, a mantra. And while you're walking, you're silently or saying it out loud, your mantra or your, your positive affirmation. And um, I did a retreat. I, I, was, I was a participant. And I, I thought this was going to be the biggest joke, like whatever. You guys are going to make me go walk around and read this affirmation and it's going to transform me. I did it 10 days in a row at this retreat and it was so powerful. Um, and so give even, even a skeptic can have some effects, some positive effects from it. And, um, I do, uh, I, I do stand up paddle boarding. And so that repetitive movement being out in nature is kind of that similar, feeling of walking. You could do it in a kayak or canoe, or um, if you ride horses, um, or like think of any activities where you could be more mindful. Now, if you're riding a horse or on any motorized vehicles, I don't, you know, don't zone out. <laughs> you need to create hyper-awareness. That's what it's doing. And I mean, in, in a, the hyper-awareness in the most positive sense of the word of hyper. <laughs> Um, so walking meditations, super powerful. And you can just walk, put your headphones in, maybe put a positive um, affirmation person or positive person speaking in your ear, music, sounds that make you feel uplifted, and then go for a walk. So we can, the, the idea is we find what works for us and do that until it doesn't work anymore. We talked about um, transcendental meditation. Um <laughs> This is just funny. You shouldn't sit in meditation for 20 minutes every day unless you're too busy. Then you should sit for an hour. Now, the recommended um, length of a meditation, they say, is you know 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening. So about 40 minutes total throughout the day. And if you're new to meditation, start with 30 seconds. Start with a minute. Start with three minutes, start with five minutes and build your way up to that 10 minute mark. And what you're going to find is it just as if you do that, that incremental step up approach to meditation, you're going to enjoy it a lot more. If you sit down and you're like, okay, I'm going to do this 20 minutes and I'm just going to be here and I'm going to, you know, organize my mind and I'm just going to have all these amazing benefits. You're just going to be like, oh my God, a minute into it only a minute and then two minutes into it. Oh my God, I thought it was 19 minutes. I thought I was almost done. So, but when you build up to it, you get this sense of, okay, that minute wasn't so bad. And then you do two minutes and you say, huh, the two minutes is already up. And then you work up to five minutes and you, you just constantly have this feeling of, wow, I could have done a little bit more maybe. And, and that's what we want to achieve when we're trying to create this good habit for ourselves, as opposed to like sitting in torment for 20 minutes. That's like asking somebody who's never done a plank before to hold plank for a minute. And that minute's going to seem like an hour. Um, so, so incremental steps into whichever version of meditation you decide to take, even the walking meditation. Some of you might be thinking, well, if I go for a walk, I'm not going to just want to walk for a minute. Well, maybe you're just walking around in your immediate space and, you know, you need to just have that ability to, to get up and move for a minute and be mindful for a minute. And then you sit down and then you work up to that lot those longer distances so i'm going to go ahead and stop the screen share before we go into the meditation and then i'm going to uh, pull my um, slides up back up to that um, additional courses that are available and um, i just want to take this time to 
answer any questions that might be coming up. Um, I'm looking for the Q&A section. Drishti, yes, thank you, Katie. Um, there's no Q&As. I try not to use too much Sanskrit when I'm teaching because I, I want it to be more um, relatable. But yes, it is a drishti, that state of looking at. That's what it is. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Open. Can you share your PowerPoint presentation? Um, I, yeah, sure. I, I mean, you can find this information anywhere, but I'm, I'm happy to share it. Yeah. I answered live. Um, I'll send it to Lynn, who can then send it to whomever will distribute it to, to you all. Yeah, so I will have to share it with, um, with continuing education at IAIA. Um, and I will also send IAIA the recording, and I believe they put the recordings on their website. Okay. So if anyone has questions about the recording or getting a copy of the presentation, please contact um, IAI Continuing Education, Jonathan. So um, Angela, to answer your question about taking everything out of your mind to silence your mind, that's, that's a misconception about meditation. And what we're doing, so just, just to um, give an example. So let's all just sit. And we can have our eyes opened or closed, whatever feels comfortable for you. If you can, if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, go ahead and close your eyes. But I want you to imagine that you're sitting alongside a, in, in a safe place and there's a, a, a road in front of you. And right now it's like a traffic jam. There's this cars just they're they're stop and go and they're clustered and they're just, it's just a mess. And um, th there's no accidents. The cars are moving, but they're like pausing and just hanging out for a little bit too long. Um, and, you know, it just, it feels, it feels uncomfortable. And that's what our minds are like most of the time. Now take a moment, sitting in that same safe place alongside the road. And then eventually we see that cluster, that dis, that, that, um, disorganized grouping of cars, slowly they begin to just move past you. And they're still there, they're still thoughts, they're still cars that were misbehaving previously, but they're now flowing away. Sometimes the same car might flow past, but that thought is just, or car is just moving nice and steady along the road. And it's no longer clustered, stopping a nice flow of thoughts from happening. So that's what's really happening in our meditation practice is we're taking that traffic jam and turning it into a nice flow of traffic. Another way to think about it is sitting and looking up at the sky when the clouds are just beautifully moving across the sky. They're never stopping for too long. They're just moving. And that's like, I like to think of the clouds as like thought bubbles. And the clouds, the thought bubbles are just moving. I have a, a positive thought. That's fantastic. Thank you for that thought. And it just keeps moving. I have a negative thought. Thank you for that negative thought. You served your purpose. Now you can move on. You know, whatever it is, we can just keep that. The meditation practice is meant to help us organize our flow of thoughts. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? Nope. Oh, okay. Jonathan has an answer for the, the class and the recording. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up that last slide that shows some of the, the classes that are coming up. And while I'm doing that, I want you to find a comfortable place to, to sit and, and be, you can sit or lay flat on your back. Just make sure that you're in a position that um, that allows you to feel safe and comfortable without feeling like you need to do a lot of fidgeting and moving around. And it can be just seated in the chair that you're in, feet planted firmly on the ground. 
and hands resting on your lap and just sitting up nice and tall, or you can sit all the way back. But the main thing we wanna to try to do is keep a nice long spine. So we don't wanna sit, if we're gonna sit, we don't wanna sit slunched, slouched over. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that slide up at the end of the classes that that are coming up because y'all are getting all nice and comfortable right now. And I don't want you to have to look at your screen. So just start taking some nice full deep breaths as you're settling into your space. And again, throughout this meditation, this is only about a five minute guided meditation. I want you to decide right now, am I going to have my eyes opened or my eyes closed? Maybe try both, whichever feels the most comfortable for you. If you're feeling like you are anxious or fidgety, if you have a blanket or a pillow, maybe place that over your lap or over your, your shoulders, your heart and shoulders. If, if you're lying flat on your back, just finding um, like putting a blanket over our hips or our lap helps us to begin to feel grounded. If we're lying flat on our backs and our low back is uncomfortable, we could bend our knees. And just begin bringing awareness to the breath as we find that comfortable position. Once you find yourself in a comfortable position, focus on your breathing. Notice how the air enters and exits your body, feeling your stomach rise on every inhale and fall on every exhale. Take a moment to let your breath slow down. Feeling your body heavy on the surface on which you are lying All that matters in this moment is your breath. All that matters in this moment is your breath and the words you are hearing. Anytime your mind wanders, that's okay. Just return your awareness back to these words, back to your breath. And as you breathe softly and slowly, you feel yourself letting go. Entering into a state of deep peace and relaxation. As your breathing continues to soften and deepen, you begin to sense the glow of a soft blue light beginning to float down over the top of your head, flowing over your face, bringing deep relaxation as the soft blue light continues to flow down your neck, into your shoulders, into your arms, Everywhere the soft blue light touches, your body experiences a release. As you enter into relaxation and you feel the soft blue light continue down your chest, your back, your torso. Feel yourself sinking into this wave of peace and relaxation as the blue light continues down through your hips, down your thighs, your knees, 
your calves, all the way down into the soles of your feet. Your entire being is illuminated in soft blue light. You begin to feel every cell within you relaxing, letting go. Take this peaceful feeling with you as you slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Waking your body for a more relaxed and peaceful stay. Just taking our time as we bring this awareness back into our bodies with movement, small movements, And whenever you're ready, slowly begin to come back to a seated position or if you're seated, just slowly opening the eyes, allowing the gaze to look down and then slowly bring the gaze around the room that you are in. If it feels comfortable, take some nice deep breaths in and raise the, the arms out and up overhead. And then as we breathe out, let the hands float back down by our sides. And just take a moment to check in with your bodies within your minds and just notice if anything has shifted. Maybe you feel more calm or maybe you feel less calm. Maybe you discovered an area in the body that's holding tension, holding pain, and you were able to let it go. And that's the end of our guided meditation. Excellent. Does anybody have any comments? I see um, one comment in the chat. I feel more calm, my muscles less tensed. Thank you. But that um, just, it's just an example of how simple a meditation can be. Um, the, 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 of an important thing about coming out of a guided meditation like that is to give ourselves the time to, to come back into our space. Um, we don't want it to be like that morning alarm that goes off and we've hit snooze 10, snooze 10 times and then we have to leap out of bed. We wanna make sure that we're allowing our bodies to reorient to, to being more in the, the environment around us. Excellent. Okay, so I am going to go back to screen share and I hate to make y'all look at a screen after a meditation, but here it is. So these are some of the, um, the other classes that are available. And I know that you can, you can find these as well on the IAIA website. I, I 
pretty sure. Um, yes, they're on the continuing education website. Yes, and on, on March 19th, I'm going to be teaching that Essentials of Great Product Photography. It is one of my favorite things to teach about, so I hope to see all of you there. We won't be meditating. You'll probably see me in a super hyper brainwave state because I get super excited and talk really fast, but there's so much information to share. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take that down. Just I just wanted to let you guys get an idea of what, what that slide looks like and what's available and the dates. And it looks like everything right now is available. So the next time I look at this, I want to see on the essentials of great product photography, that red dot by it that says wait list. <laughs> Just kidding, um, sort of. But um, so are there any other questions? We do have, I, I, I allotted some time for questions. If there are no questions, um, I could show you some other moving meditation options that don't require walking, or we could do a breathing technique, um, anything. And if you do get access to this recording, you can just go to the point where this guided meditation starts and just do this one until you're, until you're bored of it. <laughs> Them. Okay, breathing technique. So one of my favorite breathing techniques to bring myself back to a state of calm. Most of the time when we're stressed out, we breathe up here. So let's all take our hands on our chest and just see if you can only, only breathe in this space. And it's usually short, like, you know, when a, an animal is stressed or even when we see our children get really upset or another person, they're usually like tense and just breathing right here. So what this breathing technique does is it forces us to breathe into the full area of our lungs. So now just stop doing that because we want to compare to what the calm breathing feels like. One hand on the chest, one hand on the navel. And then we're going to take a breath in. So we want to be sitting up nice and tall. Breathe in and push our belly out. The bottom hand is going out. It's gonna feel awkward, I know. And then breathe into the upper part. If we wanna shrug our shoulders up a little bit, we can. And then we're just gonna exhale, push the belly in towards the spine and then relax the shoulders. And then this part of the chest contracts. And so we just do that three or four times. and just let the exhale last way longer than the inhale. I always say, let the exhale last twice as long as the inhale, because then we're building up some CO2 in our bodies, which creates a calm state in our minds. Some of us, this might make us feel more anxious and, and that's, that's okay. There's other techniques. Another one that I like is the push and pull. <sighs> Breathe out as we pull back and that opens across the chest. Because a lot of times what happens when we start to feel overwhelmed and stress is our shoulders are coming forward. We're rounding in the spine. Now, granted the biggest capacity of breathing is in the backside of our lungs. But what this does is it um, biologically puts us into um, a protected state, which is that fight or flight mode. So literally the chemicals in our body are changing when we're in this, this curled rounded position, as opposed to when we lengthen and lift and create space in our ribs. Now, like when we think about people in power poses, they're never like, they're never covering or they're always up. Like I think of Wonder Woman, She's standing broad shoulders open across the chest, and then we're able to take that full capacity of breath. So one, take those deep inhales, exhale longer than the, than the inhale. If being still like just with the hands is not comfortable, you can do. Whoosh, 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 
it's also great for getting the brain stimulated too. that that second one. Um, those are my two favorites. And another one that I like that brings in us into a more focused state is to just stand or sit nice and tall arms just dangling down by our sides. Nice big breath in, sweep the arms out and up overhead. And then exhale, press the air down beside us. Breathe in, arms reach up overhead. Exhale, press the air down beside us. And as we're pressing the air down, the shoulders are just ooh, melting down in a way. So those are three of my favorites. I, I do, I like walking meditations. I like moving meditation a lot. So when you do your walking meditations, do you have a specific area that you walk or do you have a mantra? Do you just go and be mindful and present on your walks, Joy? Or do you, um, do you have a mantra or a positive affirmation? Awesome, just breathe and observe, perfect. All right. So another good one, um, I'm just gonna show, I'm gonna have to stand up for this and move my chair back, um, is to uh, a lot of times when we're, stand, when we're seated for a long time, we can get compression in our, in our hip flexors and the low back. And what I like to do is I'll, I'll go, and this is when I used to work in an office, I'll go into the bathroom, put my backside up against the wall, and then just walk my hands down until I come into this folded kind of hanging, hanging position. So I'm just kind of, and it just releases all this tension in the back side of the body and all up and down the spine. And then come up with a nice flat spine. And another great one is if you want more, more um, abductor, adductor, create, um, come to a wide stance, um, toes, heels turned in, knees out, stand up nice and tall, arms out to the side, bring them down by the rib cage. So we're creating the stability and then just lower. Then inhale to extend, exhale. Inhale to extend, exhale. Inhale to extend. Exhale. And that just builds up some energy and gets some blood flowing in the lower part of the body. And that's and if oh, sit on the cat. I know he's he knows how to get out of my way. It's not my cat. It's not my house. I'm staying at my friends right now and the cat just loves me and <laughs> I'm surprised he's not jumping up in my face. All right. His name is Judge. <laughs> Judge, no. All right, um, that, that's it. We're um, finishing up a little bit early. Thank you, Angela. Thank you everybody for your comments and questions and for, for being here. Um, I look forward to, to coming back and sharing more, more things with y'all, either photography or yoga or meditation or just moving. Um, if you didn't see, um, Jonathan posted in the chat his email address if you want to get the recording. And also the place on the website. Thank you. You have a wonderful weekend as well. All right. Oh, Jonathan just posted it again. So if you want to just cut and paste that so you have that information if you don't have it already.
Thanks, Jonathan. You have an awesome day. Hopefully everything's going well for you right now. Happy Friday. Yes, it is Friday. <gasps> Exciting. All right. Well, I think I think that is it for us. And we are going to say goodbyes unless you have other questions. We have five more minutes. I can I can definitely fill some time. <laughs> All right, thank you.